a slimy biomechanical diorama. Inspired by H.R. Giger, one of my favorite artists from one of my favorite films, Alien. And it fits any scale. I can't say enough about Giger's beautifully disgusting work on this film. Making this took me back to those creepy scenes from the movie. And if you're interested in knowing how I made this diorama, well then you're watching the right video, because we're going to go through the entire process. Stay tuned! Welcome back to Crafted by Metamorphic Customs. Of course, we're going to start off with some XPS foam that I've cut out. Uh, this is D12 size, as I usually like to work in. So the backdrop there was about 15 inches high by about eh, 13 inches uh, wide. And the bottom piece was, again, 13 inches wide by about uh, 11, 11 inches deep. And uh, I gave myself some space here again. I wanted to make sure it could clear uh, the D12 space, the bars in the front. So I'm just going to glue the backdrop here to the bottom. And um, as I mentioned, I'm using XPS foam um, because I always do. And because I didn't want to use animal bones like Giger did in that first film. <laughs> Probably easier, but uh, I'll stick to XPS. Uh, so what I'm doing here is just building up the backdrop. So I want the two edges to stand out as if they were columns. Um, but I'm also giving myself some more room to sculpt by building out the middle, uh, the piece that I use, it's, it's always one inch thick. That's the XPS I can find in my local area. And I need it to be a little thicker. So I cut up some pieces and I'm just filling it out, making a flat wall in the back. I then used my hot wire cutter to cut out these wedge shapes. Uh, these will be placed towards the bottom and the, and the corner where the wall meets the floor, as well as the top where the wall would meet the ceiling. That's not there. Um, but as you can see, that's what I'm doing here. I'm going to do that on both of the columns, just hot glue them down. And uh, I'll also be doing that along all of the floor. Again, where the floor meets the wall and at the top as well. So that gives it a nice, um, a nice foundation there, a nice uh, sculptural base. And there you go, at the top as well. And I cut this into two inch pieces um, two one inch pieces put together because it makes it easier for me to cut it on the hot wire table but you can do it in any size and I'm also doing these wedge shapes in the middle uh, perpendicular uh, to the ones at the top and the bottom and then I'm going to fill in the, uh, the missing gaps there with these bars of XPS foam that I'm carving out to make it a little bit more round or curved on the edge Again, not following a pattern here. I'm not looking at any reference uh, material, um, but I've seen this movie and his artwork so many times that um, I'm just trying to be inspired by it and kind of make something off the top of my head. Um, this is what I'm going for. So again, this is the uh, overall foundation. Now it's time to carve the, I guess the bone-like structures that I'm going to focus on in the middle here. So before I do that, I'm going to basically draw them out with a Sharpie. Um, and I'm going not necessarily for exact bone like shapes, but definitely I want to give that impression here. Uh, maybe like a, a rib cage area, not that uh, bones that would belong to any animal we know of, but just something strange. I want to give that impression. Hopefully I think this, this will come across uh, when everything's complete. Uh, but again, I'm going to carve these out later. I'm just uh, drawing it to make it easier for myself. Uh, I could have just gone straight to the carving process, but I, I thought it would probably be easier for me to do this. Let me let me draw it out. It doesn't take that much time to, to draw it out, um, plan it out, essentially. This is fun because I'm just making it up as I go, and I'm not following any strict kind of reference material. Again, this is just a kind of a tribute or an inspiration here. So I'm just making it up as I go. And then towards the bottom areas, just try to switch it up by switching the direction of the overall uh, design flow, creating these random ovals that we'll carve in later. And you're gonna see me do this a lot. We're going to cut out thin strips of XPS foam to just add to the overall sculptural element of this diorama piece. So just adding in lines and, and 
carving in lines. As you can see here, I'm using my, my soldering iron. Uh, this is an old soldering iron. There's probably better tools you can use to melt it, but because I want to get specific lines, I might as well use this. I have it. Um, so it's kind of an old soldering iron. I don't use this for electronics. I just use this to melt XPS foam. Please remember, do this in a well-ventilated area and wear a mask. I am actually wearing a mask here. Uh, you'll see it later, as I pointed out, but uh, please wear proper uh, protection and do this in a ventilated area. And as you can see, I'm just going in and using this soldering iron to carve out uh, the lines that I've drawn. And I'm just gonna go in and try to have fun with this, make it make it look uh, like it's this organic textural wall. Uh, really focus on the mechanical aspect of the biomechanical here. So again, uh, just random stuff. Now I'm here in this bony rib texture area. Uh, I'm just carving in, again, with the soldering iron, the marks I've made. This is kind of neat. And relaxing. So if you're following along and trying to do something similar, as I always say, have fun with it. And also be careful, soldering irons are obviously hot. And that's about the basics. I think this looks pretty uh, close to what I imagined in my head. So nothing exactly like Iger's artwork, but I think it's a, it's a good uh, tribute piece, I would say. And again, adding more strips of XPS foam just to add those extra little details. I'll be doing a lot of that. And I'm using this flexible uh, tubing or hose that you would normally use to hide wires around the house. And I think this is great because it's similar to the tubes that he used. By the way, that mask I was talking about that I'm using off camera here when I'm burning the foam, because I'm gonna do a little bit more burning. I'm gonna uh, carve out this, or burn out this hole so I can fit that flexible tubing you just saw. Again, the idea is to make it look like everything is just growing naturally, no matter how mechanical it may seem it's just growing into the wall is actually biological so uh trying to fit this in there making it seem like this tube is not only built in the wall but grown in the wall if that makes any sense so i'm going to do this slowly i'm going to glue the very tip that in into that hole or that cavity that i made and then glue the edges of this flexible tubing which i've obviously cut in half uh one half on one side and the other half on the other side and just glue it bit by bit then at the end i've carved out these end caps if you will uh which i carved and sanded out to get the shape that i want uh this wasn't too hard but it took me it did take me a few minutes to carve out this exact shape and sand it down uh it was a bunch of pieces well not a bunch it was four pieces actually that i've uh used glued together carved out and i ended up with these pieces here which are shouldn't be too hard to replicate once you start getting used to carving XPS foam. So I'll glue those down and there we go. And now for a th another thin strip of XPS foam and this is where a hot wire table comes in handy because how else are you going to get a strip this thin this wide? You know, it's it's I'm not going to say it's impossible, but it's hard. So hot wire tables make it very easy. So I'm going to use this long, almost sheet of XPS foam, thin sheet, uh, to carve out uh, sections or components that I'm going to lay over these mechanical flex tubing to make it look like pieces of either skin or just biomechanical components uh, that are laying over that flex tube. As you can see here, I'm drawing out pieces within these uh, long rectangles that I'm going to cut out. And then I'm going to glue these over the flex tubing. It's kind of hard to describe these components. It's like, ah, uh, skin, I don't know. Just make it look weird and make it look, again, like even the mechanical components are growing in some kind of biological way so i'm going to glue this by gluing one edge down first or putting glue on one edge then i'm going to place that over the tube here and again the idea is to slowly adhere this if you try to put hot glue over the entire thing 
and then try to bend it over the flex tubing to get that round shape it might not work out well it's good to start off little by little and obviously as you can see the great thing about having thin pieces of XPS foam is that you can manipulate it and just easily curve it and bend it with it without it cracking or breaking. I'm going to do the same thing towards the bottom. And guess what? More thin strips of XPS foam. I told you this was coming up. So I'm going to be doing a lot of this. Just different thicknesses of XPS strips which I've cut out again with the hot wire table it makes this very very easy to do so I'm gonna get these these are nice and flexible and just run it along slowly gluing it one bit at a time and add textural details to the work if you look at Giger's artwork you'll see these what looks like either pipes tubes or even veins that are that seem to be lined beneath the surface of the biomechanical landscapes that he creates and for fun go ahead and go down to the comments and tell me how many times you heard the word biomechanical in this video <laughs> uh hard to find another word to describe it <laughs> anyways as you can see here i'm adding more of these um these strips of xps foam to create the veins the tubing uh not following any kind of pattern just whatever comes to mind nothing's really wrong here uh, I try to create parallel lines that fit next to each other to make it look again like tubing strange tubing running across this this surface and I always use hot glue as you know from my videos because it's just so quick uh, and it's been it's been easy for me to use it's been efficient I don't think it's the best glue for XPS foam. The best glue for XPS foam is well, it's foam glue or even uh, PVA glue, which is Elmer's glue. Uh, but this, these thin strips uh, being so, so very thin, uh, it's kind of difficult to do it with, with styrofoam glue or PVA glue, I find, because it's just hard to wear. Hot glue just makes it stick immediately. Um, there are ways that you can use a combination of hot glue and PVA glue at the same time um, Because like I said PVA glue is always better as well. I think a stronger hold uh, But again, this is good enough for me using hot glue. It's just faster quicker it works. Well and Again repeating lines here with the with these strips um, doing one two three lines uh, running parallel to each other again gives that that appearance of an actual working tube or vein. Honestly, it's just an aesthetic choice. You can put that wherever you want. And by the way, this clear liquid here, lacquer thinner. I'm running this a very, very, very thin coat of this all over the surface to essentially start melting some of this foam. Again, creating those unique and interesting textures. FYI, if you watch the Alien films, lacquer thinner. That's what they use to create those melting effects, or maybe not lacquer thinner, but paint thinner, acetone. Paint the XPS foam or foam in silver, dye the paint thinner with neon yellow color, drip it on the camera, and it looks like alien acid eating through metallic surfaces. Anyways, <laughs> what we're looking at here is Mod Podge. You see me they use this all the time. Uh, one of the best materials for diorama making and all crafting and I've just mixed Mod Podge with black paint to create this gray tone and I'm using the Mod Podge and just the black paint just to get just to seal it Mod Podge is a great sealer for XPS foam and for anything really and I'm just going over the entire surface no no tricks here just uh, using my cheap one inch brush to paint this all over and this will provide not only a seal but a very nice primer a very nice uh, color tone to work off of and after I've done this, I'm going to use a Liquitex Gloss Heavy Gel because I have it lying around. I've had this for forever here. And this is a good opportunity for me to use it. You could also use uh, ch a cheap uh, clear gloss acrylic caulking uh, from the hardware store, but I'm using this because I have it. And this Gloss Heavy Gel really retains its shape. 
So I'm going to brush it on in the crevices and in the corners to bring that together and to make it look more organic. Try to get away from the hard 90 degree angles and make it look like all the corners are just kind of blended together or growing together. Then I'll go to my airbrush and I'm using a Vallejo model color khaki. And I'm going to hit uh, the center or the parts of this sculpture that really stand out the most. In other words, I'm staying away from cracks, crevices, and just hitting the kind of center portions that would stand out the most and leaving the dark gray, the darker areas, again, in those cracks and crevices and creating this natural, I wouldn't say natural, natural is not the right word, but creating shadow and tones in the cracks and crevices where they normally would be. And this is just the first step. But as you see, I'm doing this, and this is just, again, this is just khaki. That's the name of the paint color I'm using. You already start to see this come to life. Maybe not the right color just yet, but this is a good color to start with. I, I didn't, I could have done this with a light gray, but I really wanted to give it a little bit more color here and go with that khaki. And I'm going to do this all over, all over the, the sculpture. Again, just avoiding the corners, the cracks, the crevices, the recesses, cover everything else but that. And next up, I'm going to switch over to my trusty FW inks. Here I'm just using FW Sepia ink, one of my most used inks and colors uh, out of all, in all my videos and dioramas and, and work. And I'm just doing squiggly lines, squiggly lines all over. This is meant to represent, you probably guessed it, some kind of veins or some kind of pattern in the skin, right? Because everything is biological. So I'm doing this all over, even over the parts like the flex tubing that look more mechanical. I'm still going over it again because everything, although it looks mechanical, it's supposed to be biological. So just doing veins all over. And right now these are really pronounced. That's fine because now I'm going to go over. I'm going to go back to that khaki paint, Vallejo khaki. And I'm going to do the exact same thing I was doing before. Hit all the areas that really are raised and stay away from crevices. And that'll really push those veins back and create depth. And then what I'm doing here is I went back again to the FW Sepia ink and I mixed in FW Sap Green. So one-to-one -one mixture of sepia and sap green. And now I'm hitting the corners again. And this gives it not only a dark brown shadow area in the corners and the recesses, but it also gives it that green tinge since I've mixed in sap green and uh, you now s start to see this <laughs> come to life i guess for lack of a better term uh and it's basically it's it's basically already there if you're if you're following along because you want to do this at home you could stop at any point here uh, that you feel is best but this is pretty much it um uh, at this point i'm pretty happy with the work again it doesn't compare to anything Giger actually sculpted right uh, but this looks pretty cool this is what I had more or less in mind when I started this and uh, what I'm doing here is I'm just using a brush with a very very light dry brush dry brush application of light gray and I'm just going over uh, the areas that stand out again just to make sure those like the the veins or the strips of XPS pop out. Uh, and then the last step is I'm using golden clear tar gel. Golden is a brand, uh, not the color. So it's just a clear, what they call their clear tar gel, which really beads up and you can create like these strips of clear looking gel, really. And it goes in kind of like this light blue, light white color, but it dries completely clear. And it gives it that sinewy mucus effect, for lack of a better term. Uh, this is great. Again, you can probably do this with clear caulking, you know, but I had this lying around. I had this, this jar unused for a couple of years, so might as well put it to use. And I'm just putting this wherever I think uh, it'll look good. And this dries, obviously, very glossy, which leads to that mucusy looking texture all over. Uh, so just 
this is a great uh, gel for effects in dioramas or even in cosplay or or figure customization this is great stuff uh, and it dries pretty quickly and there you go your end result uh, green lighting does help <laughs> any color lighting helps and, and check out these close-ups here uh, you can see that veiny texture that we did with the sepia ink uh, that was that was a lot of fun and it really looks really looks like what I thought it would look like in my head again when I started this project so very very cool stuff uh, lots of fun that those rib uh, sections there would have looked better with actual animal bones but I'm not doing that <laughs> that's a little too creepy uh, but here it is with the Hot Toys alien figure one of my favorite Hot Toys figures but I'm a little biased there of course uh, favorite film again so and uh, what I love about this is that it works with a lot of figures obviously all the figures the Hot Toys figures from this film clearly here's Dallas uh, there's the egg that comes with Dallas this Dallas figure works pretty well obviously the it would look better if it was a little bigger but again I'm trying to fit it in a detail uh, in my details so and I love this figure from from Hot Toys this is Chico figure does work at different scales this is a NECA engineer figure from the movie Prometheus and again it does fit in a detail so I hope you guys like this video don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next episode until then, stay crafted.